Are you feeling confused by the new breeding system in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Well, allow me to lend you a helping hand. Now, first off, let's answer that really important question, why would you breed? What's the point of breeding? And there are quite a few reasons. One of those reasons being to get the perfect IVs on a Pokemon. Now, what are IVs? Well, that's something I'm going to dive deeper into in another video, so I can go deep into detail. If that's something you'd like to see, be sure to subscribe to the channel. For now, let's just say these are the stats that your Pokemon are born with. Pokemon in the wild tend to have lower IVs, and through breeding, you can usually raise them up. That being said, Pokemon in 5 and 6 star raids have great IVs as well, but getting those perfect IVs on certain types of Pokemon is something you'll still have to look toward breeding to do. Another reason is to pass down hidden abilities. These are the rarer abilities that Pokemon will have, and if you can breed them down, you can make as many as you want. A fun fact, if you were to use a hidden ability patch on a Pokemon and then breed that Pokemon, you could get countless of that hidden ability Pokemon. Now that's not something that's possible through things like bottle caps and nature mints. Speaking of nature mints, another reason you like to breed your Pokemon is for the perfect nature. Now I'll say that in this game, it's a little less important because nature mints are so accessible and so cheap that you'll rarely need to use them for this reason, but it's definitely something to keep in mind while you're in the breeding process. You may as well get that nature while you're breeding the Pokemon. Another reason for breeding exclusive to this generation is to reset your Pokemon's terror type. If you were out in a raid and you got the Pokemon you've been searching for, but you don't like the terror type it has, instead of using your terror shards to reset it back to its normal typings, you could always just breed it and that would completely refresh its typings back to one of the two types that it naturally gets, or just one if it only gets one type. This can save you a lot of terror shards in the long run and I highly recommend it if you're just looking to change it to one that it can naturally get. Breeding is also a method used a lot by shiny hunters. Breeding a Pokemon with a foreign Pokemon, meaning a Pokemon that has a symbol of another language, will increase the chance of the Pokemon born being a shiny Pokemon. This is known as the Masuda method. You may have heard this word thrown around a few times. So now that we've spoken about why we may want to breed, let's talk about how to do it. I mean, that's why you're probably here in the first place. I'm sure that you've noticed that in your menu, there's an option for you to have a picnic. Now this is where the magic happens. All you need to do is bring the two Pokemon that you'd like to breed in your party to a picnic and eggs will start to appear right here in the basket. Now I've heard that you can just put the Pokemon you'd wish to breed on the top and the bottom of your party, though I prefer to just bring the two Pokemon I'm trying to breed. There's no real reason to bring the others along anyway. Though there are some restrictions here. Both Pokemon need to be in the same egg group. For example, a Cyclozar could breed with an Orthworm, but not with a Killer Wattrell. Now, if you'd like to know what egg groups Pokemon are in, I'm going to have a link down in the description to a page that will show you which egg groups they're in so you can know how to choose your breeding partners. Or you could just bypass all of this and use a Ditto. The reason Ditto is so loved amongst all trainers is because Ditto can breed with anybody from any egg group. So if you have a chance to grab that high IV Ditto, go for it. They're out there in the raids and they're definitely worth grabbing. Once you grab the egg from your basket, it will appear inside your box. You just grab the egg from your box and throw it into your party, and then you run around. Running around will cause the egg to hatch. Now, if you wanted to breed just like this with the information you have now, then you could. The problem is it's very, very slow, and there really isn't much benefit to doing it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about a couple of items that are going to be really, really helpful, including a recipe for a sandwich that is going to make this much faster and a more enjoyable experience. I'm even going to tell you about a Pokemon's ability that can make these eggs hatch faster. One item that you're really going to want is called the Destiny Knot. This has been a staple for the past few generations. What this Destiny Knot is going to do is pass five IVs down from the parents. Now this is gonna be random between both parents. You can't just throw this on a five IV Pokemon and expect to get all the five IVs. It doesn't work that way. There is a bit of RNG here. The next item is known as the Everstone. Now the Everstone is an item you're gonna throw onto the parent whose nature you want to keep. I know that I've mentioned natures a few times in this video, so I'm gonna quickly tell you what they are. A Pokemon's nature gives it an increase in one stat and a decrease in another stat. Now this is always 10%. For example, an adamant nature will give your Pokemon 10% increased attack, but 10% decreased special attack. Though that's okay if you're only using the attack stat. Though don't just go throwing the Everstone on the Pokemon for no reason. If you don't want that nature, don't use this item because it will pass it down. Instead, choose to breed without it. Then when a Pokemon with the right nature is born, you can throw the Everstone on them and use them as the breeding parent instead. 
You can also use the power items I mentioned in my EV video to pass down certain IVs. Example, the power anklet will pass down a speed IV. This is a strategy competitive players have been using for generations to get their competitive teams. So there are some easier ways to do it in this generation when it comes to certain Pokemon. Now onto the big reason that you're likely here, let's get onto the sandwich recipe. Now this recipe was actually given to me by a friend by the name of Halo Gavin 7 Gavin is doing a lot of work on this game right now and he's really trying to hit partner on YouTube. So if you had the time, check out his link in the description and go show him some love. Now onto the recipe. The first thing you're going to have to do is go to Mesa Goza and go to these stores here. In the top store and the bottom store, you're going to find the three items that you need. The top store will have banana and the bottom store will have butter and peanut butter. Don't forget to pick up a pick while you're here as well because you do need picks to make the sandwiches. I go with the gold picks. I'm not sure if this makes a difference, but this is what I was told to do and it's worked every single time. Once you have these ingredients, you're going to go and start a picnic. You're going to then walk up to the table and hit A and then select make a sandwich. Once you're in this menu, you're going to hit X to go into creative mode. You're then going to select banana, hit next, select butter and then peanut butter. After that hit next, select your gold pick and then it's time to make the sandwich. In this little mini game here, all you have to do is drag and drop the banana into the sandwich. Be careful, you can drop it, but you probably won't. And then you place down the top piece of the bread and then you place the pick and you've got a sandwich. You even get to watch this really, really strange cutscene that makes me a little uncomfortable. What this sandwich does is it gives you something called egg boost level two. Now this makes the rate that the eggs appear in the basket a lot higher. If I walk away for a couple minutes and come back, this thing is usually full. There was even a time where almost instantly there were 10 eggs here in the basket. Now sometimes it will just give you three, but if you wait a few minutes, you'll get some more. Though don't walk away for too long because the maximum eggs that can be in a basket at a time is 10. So if there are 10 in there, no more eggs will spawn until you collect them. This sandwich buff lasts for 30 minutes. If you ever want to check how much time you have left, you leave the picnic and you hit right on the d-pad and it will show you a timer. This will show you how much time that the buff has remaining. Now that you know how to pass down IVs and natures and you know how to make the eggs spawn faster, let me tell you how to make the eggs hatch faster. This is really simple. All you need to do is put a Pokemon at the top of your party that has the ability Flame Body. Flame Body has a secret passive where it warms up your eggs meaning that as you run around, they will hatch faster if you have the flame body Pokemon at the lead of your party. It's a really cool little Easter egg. That was a bad joke. Because of how bad that joke was, I'm gonna give you an extra little tip in regards to egg moves. Now, egg moves are always something that we used to have to breed for. Though now in this generation, they're easier than ever. All you need to do is throw two Pokemon from the same egg group into your party for a picnic and throw a mirror herb on the Pokemon that you want to learn the move from the other one. This is so incredible and I can't believe that they've made it so simple for us. You'll find the mirror herb at the Deli Bird presence in Cuscarafa? Cuscarafa. I, Cuscarafa. You find it in Cuscarafa. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment and let me know. I read all of them. What's the Pokemon you've had the most fun breeding this generation? Do you enjoy breeding this generation more than in others? Have you hatched a shiny? Tell me your stories. I'd love to hear them all. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And have a wonderful day.